Okay, let's go ahead and uh, and roll into our uh, post-race uh, press conference, 11th Annual Geico 400. Join us up on the podium right now, certainly a man who had a, played a big role in today's victory. That's Crew Chief Darian Grubb, Crew Chief for the number 14 Office Mobile, excuse me, Office Depot, Mobile One Chevrolet at Stuart Haas Racing. And uh, Darian, let's talk about uh, the ebb and flow there at the end. Obviously, a strong car throughout the afternoon and, and uh, what it was like there the last few laps. Uh, uh, before you uh, got got across the start finish line, it was just a really good day all the way around for us. We uh, started out 26, so we knew we were going to be struggling for track position all day. But Tony was still able to make up a few positions those first few runs, even though the car wasn't perfect. So the picker did an awesome job uh, getting him in and out of the pits and doing the adjustments, and got the car a lot better those first two runs. I think we gained five positions the first run, ten positions the second run, and after that it was just steadily marching forward uh, from there. And then very end. The, the fuel mileage was definitely, we knew, going to be an issue, but Tony's one of the best at saving fuel, so we just try to keep him updated on who we were racing, how far we were ahead, and uh, making sure that we had enough to make it to the end. Questions now for Darian. Let's start with Joe and then go to uh, Jenna. Joe Menzer, NASCAR.com. Darian, uh, were you guys, uh, how concerned were you after the practices because it didn't look like they went the way maybe you wanted, uh, or did you? feel like you had something that you weren't showing? I feel like we definitely had a top 10 car at the end of practice. Uh, we definitely didn't have the fastest speed out there. We knew we were going to have to have a little bit uh, to figure it out, but the guys did a good job in engineering and the, the sim group and come up with a few changes that hit exactly what we needed. And we started out pretty dang close, especially regarding the track conditions. It was really close to what we had the first two practices today with it being cloudy and a little cooler. So. We are actually pretty impressed with how close it was and just a couple of adjustments. We went a little bit too far with the first adjustment on the first stop, then we backed half of that back out, and we pretty much stayed around that area for the rest of the race. Let's go with Jenna, and then we'll go across here to uh, David and then to Mike. Jenna Fryer, AP, two questions, Darian. I guess it was after Michigan that Tony said that you guys shouldn't even be in the chase, and you've had three really, really strong weeks in a row. So what has changed and what has pushed you guys on that upward um, spiral? And... Tony said on Thursday, I guess it was, he didn't think that he was a championship contender. He said seven guys were, and the th he said the 14 wasn't. Did you agree with that, and, and does that change this? That, that's Tony's mindset. Uh, we all work too hard to even come in and feeling that way, and those were definitely in the heat of the battle uh, comments that he made. We, we had a bad run from, from what we expected to have at Michigan, so we didn't feel like at that point we were contenders. Uh, you leave there, but then you go in the shop the next morning and you put your game face back on. You're saying, we are contenders and we're going to be chase contenders. And that's the way we treat it. We, we don't work any differently. Uh, we work really hard. These uh, 11 guys we're racing against are going to be the toughest every week. We know that, so we just got to come out on top when we can. We're going to have an off week here and there, but the hardest we can work is the best we can work. So just keep doing that. And everybody at Stuart Haas Racing did a great job keeping their head up. Even after some of those comments, it kind of took a little bit to rally the troops and keep the morale up because that was the feeling after those few weeks. But then we had these two solid runs leading into this week and now this win. It should keep everybody really pumped up. We had a really strong uh, race this week for both cars for Stuart Haas Racing. We do a little of both. Uh, we, we've had conversations to where I have to do the things to keep him pumped up and let him know what we're doing to get better. That's the biggest thing is making sure he knows what we're working on to try to get better because where we are is not the best. We know we have some areas to improve on. So if I give him feedback of what we're working on the engineering group and things to get better, it makes him a little more confident that I'm not just blowing smoke. I'm, I'm really telling him what we're doing to get better, and we go to the racetrack and we prove it to him. So uh, once we do that, we get better. Go ahead, David. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN.com. I believe it was Chase Opener last year. You guys did run out of gas. Um, were you thinking about that there yeah, at the th end? thanks for the reminder. I, I honestly did not think about it at all during the <clears> run <throat> until after the race when somebody else brought it up. Uh, it's You deal with every week uh, on its own, and we had a fast race car both times, and this time it l luckily worked out in our favor.
we call him that every once in a while ourselves. So. This room's still full of bigger idiots than I am, so that's on the record. Actually, the one that asked that question probably is the biggest one in the room. So, Jenna, nobody rang your buzzer again this week. Let's, uh, you can't help but not shut up. Let's hear from uh, Tony Stewart right now. Tony, champion uh, race today, uh, win this uh, Geico 400. Number 14, Office Depot, Mobile One Chevrolet. It's his 40th career NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win. That ties him with Mark Martin for 16th all-time. It also gives him a win in 13 straight uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series seasons. So congratulations on that, and uh, talk about uh, getting off to a great start in the chase. Oh, man, you couldn't, you couldn't pick a better uh, weekend to, to get that first win of the year than here at Chicago, obviously. Um, you know, there, we felt like there were, you know, three or four opportunities earlier in the year that we let some get away from us. But um, you know, we we've, we've struggled. We've had a we've had a miserable year. But uh, the last three weeks uh, have really started coming into it. We had a really good run in Atlanta, um, a good solid run last week at, at uh, Richmond, and then to come out this weekend. I, I didn't honestly know going into the race. I, I don't think Darian and I either one thought that. We uh, had as good a car as we as we thought we needed to win today, but uh, it didn't take long in the race to figure out that we were pretty solid. It was just getting the track position. I mean, it was really hard at the beginning of the race to make up any ground, and then uh, you know we had we had one restart there where we just we caught a bunch of guys messing around with each other, and we were able to just pick them off two at a time. You know, a couple times we were three wide and through the middle and in positions that we didn't want to be in and that we typically wouldn't put ourselves in. But, you know, the way guys were racing today, uh, you, you had to take chances. You had to put yourself in bad spots. Everybody was putting each other in bad spots during the day. And, um, you know, you just had to – some guys in particular, you just had to get through and, and get away from them. And, uh, you know, it seemed like once we got through that batch of cars, we were able to, to keep going forward. And I think we went from 18th to, to – seventh or sixth or something in in two stints there so uh you know once we got up toward the front we we had a car that was good enough at that point to pick off a couple more cars on the restarts and once we got in in the top four there i think it was uh you know once we got to that point it was and uh, as long as we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot we we were in position to at least have a nice solid top five finish uh, you know we we knew we had speed we just uh just depended on what line that you ended up restarting on, whether it was the inside or outside, and it seemed like we were better on the outside row. But, um, you know, at the end, you, you, you hate to have to play the fuel mileage game, but, you know, that's just the way the caution came out. And, uh, you know, we came in and got fuel, and, and he's, you know, Darian told me we had to, we had to save a, a lap's worth of fuel. So, uh, you know, we, we had a whole run to do it. But, um, you know, we, we kept a lot of pressure on Matt and, and uh, you know, finally got by him. And then once we got out to a... You know, second and a half, two second lead, then we could start backing off to their pace and start saving fuel. And and I felt like I'd saved enough to get us to the end. But um, you know, we we came off of turn two after we got the checkered, and the fuel pressure was down to two pounds, and it stayed there till uh, just shortly after we picked up the checkered flag at the flag stand. And and we didn't do any wild burnout or anything like that, and and ran out before we ever got on pit road. So uh, we were we were closer than I wanted to be. But um, you know. Uh, we didn't have anything to lose. I mean, where we're at in the chase right now, I mean, we, we had to, we had to press and, and, um, you know, I was, I was glad I saved as much as I did, but, um, you know, I, I had a good enough car to get us there and, you know, Darian and his calls and, and the car that they gave me gave us the opportunity to get to the lead where we were able to do that. Okay. Mike, do you have a question? Go ahead. Mike Embry, speed.com. Tony, do you recall about how many laps were left when you started saving fuel, and then was was there a point with three, four, five to go when you knew you could just go flat out from from there? Uh, I would, I don't know what lap we took the lead, but it was probably roughly four or five laps after we got the lead, and it took to to build that two second lead, and then once we got out there, then that's when we started really conserving and and trying to take care of it to the end and. All we were doing was just trying to match their pace. I mean, Darian was giving me intervals every lap, and, and I didn't care what my lap time was. I was just more worried about what the interval was because we knew, you know, they they had to kind of sell me that Truex was going to have to pit, and once they got me sold on that, then it was, you know, we just kept worrying about our pace with Jimmy and, and um, Matt at that point. Let's go Joe and then down to Jenna. Go ahead, Joe. 
Joe Menzer, NASCAR.com. Uh, Tony, even on uh, Thursday, you said you thought you guys were really underdogs and, and kind of named a bunch of other people. I mean, how do you feel now? Does this uh, put you squarely? Uh, I mean, does that change your mindset on that? Uh, I'm not sure one weekend can do that. But, I mean, I feel better about it, obviously. We've had three good weekends in a row. Today doesn't change my mind, but the last three weeks definitely make me feel better about it. I mean, we still got nine hard weeks to go, and we got some tracks that – have been a struggle this year, so um, you know we we still got a long way to go. But this is this gets us off to the right start. Go ahead, Jenna. Jenna Fire AP. At any time, did you have flashbacks to last year in New Hampshire when you were trying to stretch the fuel there and worry that it could all blow up the wrong way? No, I didn't. I mean, I was I was just worried about our interval. Honestly, I mean it's. Uh, we, we've lost a lot more fuel mileage deals than we've ever won. I mean, so, uh, you, you know, you really don't have time to think about what happened a year ago. I mean, we were, I'm listening to him and worrying more about the intervals than I got. Let's go back here to Jay and then to Nate. Or does that gentleman have a question? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Dave Mark Lowe, WJOL, Tony. Uh, third win at Chicagoland, uh, 40 years old, 40th win. Uh, it looks like you're going to have a good year the rest of the year. Uh, do the numbers mean anything to you? Do you play the numbers game at all? I hope it doesn't mean I have to wait till I'm 41 to get another win. Because <laughs> that's going to suck, having to wait and get one a year. But, um, you know, it's I'm proud of that. I mean, and, and you know, after hearing what Kerry said, I mean, to be tied with Mark Martin, that's a that's a huge honor in this sport. So, um, you know, Mark, Mark's one of the guys that's been one of my mentors and, and somebody that's on my top five on my hero list. And, uh I'm probably most proud of that fact after winning today than anything. It's um, you know he's somebody I've got a lot of respect for and a lot of admiration for, and uh, wish I could be more like him. But um, you know it's that's pretty cool to be sitting here and and be tied with him in the all-time record book. It's pretty neat. Go to Jay and then across to Nate. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, Jay Howard, Yahoo Sports. Tony, you just said that um, you know where where we're at in the chase right now. We had to press twelve points. It doesn't seem. You know, first race doesn't really seem from this perspective that you're in a press situation at that point. Can, can you kind of explain that a little bit more? Well, we were tied for ninth in the points or whatever, so we had nowhere to go but up. So, you know, what what are we going to lose if we if we take a gamble and it doesn't work? You know, we we really weren't taking a gamble, but I mean, we I was more worried about getting the, getting the win than I was worrying about what was going to happen if we if we didn't win the race. So, uh, you know, we. We had nowhere to go but up, so we could we could put that pressure on those guys. And uh, you know, it's it's still ten weeks, but I mean, we we had a we we needed every point we could get today because we may not you know we may have an off week in the next nine weeks, so uh, we're going to need everything we could get right now. It wasn't winter or nothing, but I mean, we we ran hard enough to get to the lead, and if. And if we ran too hard getting to the lead and ran out, I mean, there was a chance that they were going to run out too. But, um, you know, we, were, we weren't going to be any more conservative than those guys were. I mean, we were going to push them to make the decision to, to have to save fuel. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day. I, I guess for both Tony and Darian, Tony, you said Thursday that it was going to take a revelation to kind of get through these last 10 weeks and, and become a title <laughs> contender. Did that happen this weekend or did it happen today? Because despite having won, it seems like you guys are, are still pretty subdued about about the impact of the victory? One day doesn't change the whole season. So, I mean, we, like I said, we still got, same thing I said a minute ago, we got nine races that we got to go through still. And we got to, I mean, today's an awesome day. I'm very proud of what Darian did. I'm proud of our guys. But, you know, we got nine more hard weeks. So, uh, you know, this is one of ten. So there's a lot, lot that can happen and a lot that has to happen. So, uh, you know, unless you guys know what the future is, I can't really answer that accurately. Darren, any comment on that, Darren? Yeah, you say we're subdued, but if you hadn't realized, that that's kind of the way we are every week. We come in every week trying to be the fastest race car and doing everything we do to get the best finish we can get. And uh, obviously today it all worked out in our favor, and we're going to try to do the same thing next week. We, we don't get a chance to celebrate too much. we got to be at the shop tomorrow morning getting ready for New Hampshire. So we've we got a lot of hard work ahead of us, nine more weeks, to keep doing the same thing we're doing. You don't want to have too big a high and too big a low. Dustin, do you have a question? Go ahead. Dustin, long landmark newspapers for either one of this, uh, either one of you. Uh, you know, I know Tony said you had to press today. Um, now second in points, seven points behind. 
obviously still a long way to go, but how do you maintain that or does that change or how do you convince yourself to continue to press uh, based on how well it worked today? Uh, if, you, if you look at it just with the competitors we're racing against, those, those other 11 guys, you have to press every week. If you're not, you're not going to compete with those guys because one of those 11 is going to be pressing a little harder than you are. Uh, you hope they press their luck a little bit too much, but you just got to be on top of your game and get every position you can get and every point you can get because it's going to matter when it's all over. No, not at all. Jim Utter, right over here to your left. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer, for Tony and for Darian. Um, and this was kind of a surprise last year in the chase opener that so many people took chances. Were you surprised, Tony, that so many of your fellow chase contenders gambled uh, on the gas deal and several of them came up short? And, Darian, were you surprised that several other teams did the same thing? It, it really wasn't a gamble, though. It's just the way the race laid out and the way the cautions fell, so that's the lap we had to pit on. Uh, the only other thing you could do is be the conservative guy and come in and pit because you don't want to try to save any fuel, but you knew you were going to be a lap down then. So it's not really a gamble. It's just a call that had to be made yeah. considering the laps that were run. It's hard for me on my side, you know, knowing I, I was – I saw more what uh, Matt and Jimmy were doing. I didn't really know what the scenario was with everybody else as far as whether they could make it or not. I mean, I was – just all I could analyze were the guys that we were around at the time. Go ahead. Tony Stan Genota, WJOL. Well, it seems like this team took off after the announcement you were going to add a third team. Was that a little bit of a hampering until that announcement was made and after that a little weight off your shoulder and let you able to focus more on driving the car and less of the owner aspect? No, definitely not. I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't affect the decisions that are made day in and day out to make the 14 car and the 39 car competitive. So, uh, you know, it, it's ironic that it happened there, I guess, but it didn't have any, any bearing on how we run the race team. Joe, do you have another question? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, Tony, when you got uh, kind of ticked off there and, you know, said there were a bunch of idiots around uh, driving around you, what specifically was, you know, making you angry there? And, and, and uh, is that sort of a byproduct of the chase that everybody was kind of scrambling a little earlier maybe than they would normally? Nah, because it wasn't even chase guys, <laughs> you know. It's guys that didn't make the chase. But, um, you know, it just wasn't a lot of give and take there. I mean, there were there were a lot of times when it was obvious that guys were quicker than others early in the race, and instead of using the etiquette that we've had forever, it's, uh, you know, it's. I don't think you're going to see that etiquette anymore. Uh, I mean, I think it's just dying off. I think guys, uh, you know, guys don't care whether they make anybody mad on the racetrack or not. They just... They're going to do what they want to do, and they're they're only solely worried about themselves. So, uh, you know, we're we're going to start adopting that attitude. I mean, uh, I'm tired of being a guy that gives a guy a break, and then guy doesn't do it in return, and or the guy puts you in a bad situation. And we were put in multiple bad situations by guys that I got a lot of respect for, and that are friends of mine. So, uh, I'm just going to adapt to their style. I mean, I'm not going to fight 42 guys to try to convince them to do the right thing. They don't. They don't want to do the right things, so we're just going to do it their way. It's a lot easier just to not care about anybody but ourselves, so that's what we'll do. Uh, Tony Stanginota again, uh, following up on that one. Do you feel these younger guys are a little bit more fearless? They aren't earning the, the veteran driver's respect. They're just coming out here and thinking it's all for them, some of these young guys? Uh, I don't know. I think, I think in their minds they respect them, but they, I, don't, I don't know that. You know, when you had Dale Earnhardt around and stuff, you, you learned if you weren't doing the right thing and, you know, Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace, they they would teach you if you were doing something wrong at the wrong time. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, you see what happens now. You take somebody out, they, they get their car fixed, they come out, and their sole goal is not to just go ahead and finish it out and get the points they can get. Their sole purpose of coming back on the racetracks to ruin your day. So, uh, you know, it's just the attitude of everybody uh, on the racetracks changed. I mean, the, the ante, I guess, has gone up. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it was a part of the sport that I liked because I liked the respect that guys gave each other. And there's still guys that do. I mean, you still got guys like Matt Kenseth and, and uh, Jeff and, and Jimmy and, uh, you know, Harvick. And, you know, there's still guys that do. But And, and it, the funny thing is the guys that don't do it are the guys that don't have good days all the time. And, and they haven't figured out that if you work with everybody, that everybody else will work with you. But 
you know, you got to do what everybody else is doing. And, uh, you know, there's there's a handful of guys that, you know, we still know will, will race us with respect. And that's why those guys end up up front every week. It's, an, it's our advantage that, that those guys are the only few guys that know how to do it. Jenner. <clears throat> Tony, I saw on your TV interview you said you weren't feeling well yesterday. What was wrong? And I, I guess the rain bought you a day. Would, would the outcome have been different if you had to race yesterday? I've been battling a migraine for a day and a half. I mean, it started about an hour before we qualified on Saturday. So, uh, you know, we battled that a lot, actually. I mean, there's a lot of weekends we have it. But, uh, you know, we've raced with them before. It's not fun, but, I mean, it, it really... I don't. I can't say that I remember that it's actually affected us in the car. I mean, you get out of the car afterwards and you feel like you want to get hit by a train and make you feel better. But it definitely, uh, you know, it seemed like once the weather came through last night about 11 o'clock, it finally broke a little bit and finally got a good night's rest. So um, it definitely didn't hurt us having that extra day for sure. But I don't know that it would have mattered yesterday if we ran. More questions? Nate? I know ultimately it's more about the car than about the his, the history, but 13 straight seasons now, you've never had a, a season in Sprint Cup with going winless. Does that does that mean a little bit to you that you extended that today? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it it would have uh, it would have been hard to take at the end of the year to break that string. I mean, it's uh, you know I had a I had a long string in USAC of winning a race every year for like 15 or 16 years there. So uh, you know I don't I don't know how many guys can say that they've won. And every year that they've competed in the series, so uh, that's something I'm really proud of, and I've had two great teams that have helped me do that. Tony and Darren, congratulations on today's win, and good luck next week at Loudon.